in this uh, video we'll be colorizing a photo which is a lot like uh, vectorizing a photo but um, in this case we'll be working with bitmap tools not vector tools uh, done and looks very similar to a vector um, although it is still a bitmap so what you saw so far was getting an image altering or adjusting its contrast and maybe its saturation either in a graphics editing program or a preview uh, then the, the work is dragged onto a canvas using Fireworks, Photoshop, or any other graphics editing software. Uh, essentially then what you do is go in with a color wand um, and select certain areas of the photograph. You can control the tolerance or the areas that you uh, select um, using you know, some various tools to select more or less of a color. And then essentially you're going in and filling that area with a color that you've selected using the eyedropper tool from the photograph or any color that you choose. Uh, so what you're essentially doing is breaking down the tonal values uh, within certain areas and, and separating those tonal values. Um, the photograph should exist within its own layer untouched and most of the work or all of the work could be done on a new layer on top. So you're not actually, you know, dropping these things or pasting these colors onto the photograph, but you're actually creating, you know, your own layer above the photograph. In fact, what you're seeing right now is where I eyeball the photograph out, allowing myself to see uh, what I've done. In the more detailed areas, like you see here on the face, you know, mess around with the tolerance a little bit to, you know, you know, you can grab uh, more of the tonal, brown tonal values or less. Uh, essentially what I did there is filled with one peach color. Uh, and what a lot of people try to do here with this is actually to simplify the image. Uh, so, you know, staying away from capturing every tonal value within an area, as long as it leaves enough detail for you to read the picture is okay. Uh, so there you see some of the peach tones have been uh, filled, selected and filled, uh, going back to the wave here. In fact, at this point, you know, you can get a little creative with your fills. Uh, so I've selected kind of the medium blue within the wave there. When I select the next area, one of the things I'll do here is fill it with a gradient fill. All right, actually it was an accident, uh, but you can see the neat effect here that occurs from going with a different type of fill. So once I hit the fill button there, and it does spill out from my area, and actually that winds up being kind of an interesting effect with a feathered edge and a gradient fill. So feel free to be creative in how you fill these areas. You don't have to abide by what the photo tells you. Uh, so make sure, you know, along the way you brainstorm and consider filling with, you know, colors of choice, filling with textures, patterns, uh, and or gradient fills can give you some really neat effects on this. Uh, in the shorts here, you see as you're getting into more detailed areas, there's quite a few colors there. There's whites, there's variations of the pink. Again, simplifying those areas to, you know, a color palette that is uh, much smaller than you'd find in the original photograph. In fact, here, you know, any area that isn't black, what I've done in the shorts there is selected pink, okay? And what will happen a lot of times is you eyeball the photograph out, you'll find uh, missing areas, okay? Areas that have not been selected. Not a huge concern at this point. It is something you can easily fill in later, you know, touching up areas. So as long as you're getting enough of those areas to capture the effects of light.